Uh, don't know much about art, but I know what disturbs me. Damien Hurst, if you hadn't guessed. It's called Verity and she's got skin hanging off her thigh and half her abdomen's exposed and she's got like a child in there and... Yeah, I'd have gone for something a bit more classically, uh, classically Aegean, but there you go. Ah, morning in Ilford Group. Feeling much better, have my... I'm still waiting for breakfast, not too early. And I don't know, let's see. I mean, feet, feet aching a bit. Um, I've had a little bit amb ambul about without the backpack on, and I think I'm probably okay to, to carry on to um, Woolacombe. And because of my somewhat reckless surge yesterday, I'm already over halfway there. When I get there, I can decide if I want to play through and carry on further. Um, I think there's a bit of time pressure because I think mid Wednesday onwards to Thursday morning, there's going to be some quite prodigious rain. So I, know, I knew I was going to get rained on on this trip, but I've been lucky so far. Uh, yeah, and there's precious little camping and stuff around around the torn Torridge estuaries, which I should be tackling on my like originally planned last three days of the trip. Of course I don't have to camp, I mean I quite enjoyed the whole hotel B&B experience, you know. And it's, it was always about the hiking, not the camping this trip, so I may end up just giving up on the camping altogether. We'll see, we'll see. I'm trying to get at least one more ninja camp in this trip before I throw in the towel entirely on that score. But yeah, that tends to just a nightmare. So, but I'm rested and rejuvenated and had a good night's sleep and I'm showered and I'm wearing clean clothes that flow over my body like silk. It's fantastic. So I'm going to go and have a full English breakfast and then check out, pick up the backpack and press on around the coast. <coughs> and I'll probably talk to you later. Yeah, so we are. It's um, Tuesday, so it must be day four. Uh, and day four, I think it was meant to be Coombe Martin to Woolacombe. Um, oh, careful not to uh, drop the phone over the edge. <coughs> Only I'm um, sort of halfway to Woolacombe already, so <laughs> that's good. Yes, I think the B&B thing was a, a great restorative. I've charged my power pack for me electricals, I've got fresh water, had a big fry up English breakfast with all the toast and the best cup of tea I've had in a very long time. Uh, and now, yeah, here I am back in harness. Fresh clothes still. I won't be fresh for long. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know what the plan's going to be, really. I mean, the whole schedule's starting to slip because I'm faster than the website thought. Um, but I think I'm being pushed a bit too hard because I can feel a sort of uncomfortable warmth from the ball of my uh, left foot. Which is a blister in the making, I'm sure. Um, I'm going to press on anyway. I think it'll be alright. It's feeling okay walking around a little bit this morning. Um, and yeah, so I could either take it really easy and just get to Woolacombe with half a day in one day. Um, and then, I don't know, try and find a campsite or a ninja camp or, or um, another B&B. &B. <laughs> get used to that. Or if I get to what's more likely to happen is I'll get to Woolacombe, it'll be like one in the afternoon, I'll get bored and then I'll just carry on yomping on to the next waypoint. So it's just down through Daunton Sands, Woolacombe Beach, round to the Tor and Torridge Estuaries, round to Brompton. And looking at the map, that's all just like small village, small towns and things around there. It's not really tourist season, tourist places, not much rugged coastline or anything, it's just people places where people live and work. So pitching the tent up in the middle of a school playing field or whatever is going to be a bit of a no-no. So things might get a bit more awkward in that regard. Also, uh, well, I pressed the thing on the back. Oh no, we're still going. All right. Ah, I'm a terrible cameraman. So we've got weather to worry about because mid-Wednesday onwards it's going to start really hammering down, particularly Thursday early morning through to about mid-afternoon black clouds, two raindrops, and I can't really avoid being out in it. I can't hide for that length of time, including overnight, so I'm going to have to get the old waterproofs out, which is what I bought them for, you know. I'm sort of expecting this somewhat. 
So yeah, I mean, if I keep, I seem to be doing about a day and a quarter's worth of hiking every day, which means that over four days I'd have done five days worth of hiking, which means if I keep this pace up, I'll probably finish the whole thing in, West, in Westwood Ho a day earlier than I had thought, which is already a day early because I've used my travelling down day to do half a day's hiking from Minehead as well. So I could be in, West, in Westwood Ho by Friday. I don't know. Well, or even Thursday, I don't know. I'll have to see. Trouble is, I know what I'm like, and if I push myself too hard, I'm running the risk of some sort of trip ending injury, some major blister or something. In which case, that's not such a problem roundabout from here onwards, because it's all little villages that are connected to Barnstable by buses quite frequently, and Barnstable's where I'm going to go home at the end of it all anyway. So, I mean, you know, Exmoor was the difficult bit, because it's all very remote. And anything goes wrong out there, you just have to suck it up and get on with it. But we're done, down and off of there now. And this is all just North Devon seaside villages, quite low-lying. I've got one big hill to do today, by the looks of the little chart thing. After that, down onto Staunton Sands and so on, it's probably quite flat from the entire rest of the trip. So I think I'm in good. You know, a bit little, it's, yeah, it's like I said, aches versus injuries, you know. And it's, yeah, there's plenty of aches, but nothing I'd class as an actual injury yet, so... I just need to try and listen to the voice of caution and not push myself too hard again. As for camping, I don't know. I mean, I'm getting quite hacked off. I mean, I've only done two nights in that tent and it's it's just really uncomfortable. And, and getting good night's sleep is important for being able to proceed the next day. And also morale, you know, if I'm just so fed up with everything I want to just die, then, then that impacts my, my ability to finish the rest of the trip. Anyway, we are basically at Ilfracoon... Is essentially the halfway mark for the whole week, and I'm ahead of schedule, which is good. I was expecting to be here sort of mid early afternoon today, but uh, no, we're going to keep pressing on. Uh, no, I'm enjoying it though. I'm enjoying it. That's a really good cup of tea. What I could do right now is an ice cream, but we are sort of Tuesday mid-season, I think. A seal. I don't know, hard to say. Maybe it's just a rock that's looking at me funny. Yeah, anyway, onwards, onwards. Let's crack on with this day and see how we are at the end of it all. And the old foot status. I always knew that doing a whole week of hiking and back to back was going to be the major challenge of the whole thing. But mostly on the feet because I just haven't done this many in a row. But I'm doing all right so far. I think I've done about 40 miles overall since Minehead over the days. And holding up better than I thought. Uh, getting good night's sleep is going to increasingly be important, so I suspect I probably will be falling back onto B&Bs more and more as we continue. We'll see, we'll see. That's next week. When the next the next week I do, Westwood Ho down to Padstow or wherever, I might just do the day bag and B&B &B thing the whole way through. Be a lot less uh, stress with this ridiculous rucksack. Particularly if I'm not going to be using hardly any of the stuff in there. Anyway, the, uh, the future lies that way, around yonder headland. I expect we'll start swinging round the end and then heading south down the uh, coast. We should be seeing more of Lundy and probably less of Wales. So, uh, see you later. <sighs> well, hopefully that was the big head of the day. <laughs> I'm really soaked in sweat again, so much for the shower. Some viewpoint thing up there, which I shall go and swear at in a minute. Uh, wind farm, some distance there, spinning away. Yeah. Oh. Lots of uh, local colour, sheep all over the place here. Yeah, there they are. So I think I'm over there next. Up and down, up and down, dog walker, yeah. And then zigzag where those sheeps are. And then over onto the headland there, to a place called Lee. Some sort of uh, seaside village where hopefully ice cream can be purveyed. <sighs> you, you've not put your finger of effort in this trip, have you? Look at you, just sitting there on the bench, like you're all worn out, like you've done some work. Ah, oh, I'm carrying all your gear. Yeah, but I'm carrying you. <sighs> I'm very much the uh, Samwise to the uh, Frodo Baggins on the bench there for this expedition. Won't let me carry the ring, no. 
And I've got to carry him all the way to bloody Westwood Ho and chuck you in a volcano. Oh, that was an appealing thought. Bloody thing. Yeah, fall off the bench, see if I care. Ah, I'm not going to let that uh, spoil my otherwise serene mood. It's very nice up here, very calm air still. Again, it's that combination of overcast but, but warm. Cool breeze to keep me from overheating. Fortuitous weather, which I shall probably come to miss greatly by the end of the week. <sighs> I'm going to just sit here for a bit and contemplate what I've just done. Which was down there, in fact. Ah, 10 o'clock. Time for a spot of loafing, I think. That's probably the problem, I'm not doing enough loafing. But this is magnificent. Look at this lot of nice wide, safe, not right on the edge cliff path along the top here. Greenery, birds flying, little puffy white clouds, blue sea stretching away, little boat chugging along down there, ruining the mood. Worms Head Peninsula, that's the that's the one. The sticky outy southern bit of Wales. Pembrokeshire and stuff. That sign's a bit faded. I've had a good old close inspection. It says public path, please keep to it. On a sort of Victorian style lamppost. Probably been here since the Victorian era. <sighs> nice. Maybe I should just sit here for a bit, spend a couple of hours. Not a couple of hours, I don't have that kind of time. Well, 15 minutes then, that won't hurt. It's nice though. Just finished a big series of uh, irritating ascents. I think I'm pretty much on the top of the top of most. Still, if this trip has taught me anything, there's always more up. <sighs> I don't care though. It's lovely. recommend this even if you're not a nut job like me just just spend a weekend in Ilfracombe or something this is only about a mile or two out of town come up here sit stare contemplate wonder where it all went wrong no 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 it's going well and I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying this it's just wonderful really calm except me plodding along swearing a lot oh let's check the maps then I'm on a new map it's always exciting oh, I had to bring two maps this trip this is a two map problem so here is the first map. This is map one, Exmoor. Observe the photo. There's a, there's a man in severe distress, stumbling through a river. Oh God, help! Where am I? I'm lost. I come on holiday by mistake. Now compare that with map two, which is now what I'm on. Yay, we're at the beach. Look, the sunset. There's a bloke out leaping into the waves, he's on some sort of miniature surfboard thing, the dog looks so happy and that's just glorious sunset. Yeah, so um, hopefully that's an accurate reflection of the two parts of my journey. I'm done with the uh, stumbling through streams and uh, having uh, having to have a rugged active time. Ah, let's see, so where are we, where are we? Right, there we are, there's El Procum. I shall endeavour to focus and keep it in some light and things. Probably not great viewing. So, Ilfracombe, yes. And I um, spent the night there. It's a little harbour thing there. Try to go close up. No, yeah, yeah, you can do close up. Yeah, there you go. Just next to the lifeboat station there on the corner. So, we've been up and around this headland, up and around here. Now we're up on here somewhere. Tarka Trail, Southwest Coast Path. Both paths follow the same route at the moment. Something to do with Tarka the Otter. Tours Park. I think I've done that actually. I think I'm not sure. Yeah, I remember crossing there. So I think I'm on this this ridge line here somewhere, probably about there, which is all very nice. So we've done quite a lot of climbing. Doesn't look like contour-wise we've got too much more up to do. I think it's down now, down for a bit anyway. So then we go down to the edge here, over the other side, to my next, uh, to my next potential place I can buy an ice cream. Here, which is uh, Lee Bay. And the little town of Lee, and presumably there's something on the seafront. There's a hostel. Don't know. Whatever. I'll just keep plodding on through. PC. That's a sign I've come to respect and admire. Public conveniences. Basically a toilet block where I can potentially get some water. Getting through the water quite quickly today. Actually, already down to one and a half bottles. I have to just climb and all that. It's hills that do it. I have to stop and have a swig. Turns out I'm essentially fueled by water. 
Who knew? So, um, yeah, from, from Lee. Oh, come on, stay still, Matt. See, bloody rucksack not helping. Could at least act to the part of a decent table. So, yeah, round all this headland into Mort Point. So, a bit, of, bit more rugged e cliffs, but again, look at the contours and the elevations there. What's that? There's a 30 there, 72, 72. It's essentially quite low lying and level. I mean, there'll be the occasional coombe, occasional culvert or river, I'm sure. But anyway, round all that and down to Woolacombe, which I've scrawled on here four to five to help me work out what day it is. So that would essentially at Willacombe, which I reckon I'll probably hit around 12 o'clock or maybe two in the afternoon, will be the end of day what? Day four. But I know what I'm like and I'm probably going to push on down here. Now this all looks interesting. Willacombe sand. Just a massive flat beach. So I could probably make some good time along there. So I'm getting quite concerned about this incoming weather. Was I rambling? <laughs> Still quite self-conscious about rambling into this camera when there are strange people about. Anyway, yeah, the weather is going to change for the worse mid-Wednesday, which is tomorrow. Uh, so, I mean, the more distance I can get while it's fine, the better. So I probably will keep going as long as my feet allow, or at least up until uh, up until dark along here. Mind you, this kind of coast path flatness is more conducive to hiking after dark, so who knows? I don't know. I don't know, let's get to Woolacombe and then we'll worry about planning and what to do next from there. In time then, can just sit here and stare for a bit. Well, thank you very much, Coast Path. <laughs> Thought I was done with all this. Nope, going to be down and up. Uh, at least there's a bit of a cooling breeze anyway. Lee was a big disappointment. I had the toilets, I filled the water bottle, so that's good. But there was no one ice cream shop that wasn't open. So that's £2.25, they're not getting from me. I have to wait till the next big beach then, I guess. Anyway, I've got to stumble down there and then uh, hack my way up there. So it looks like the up and down isn't done just yet. Having a bit of a rest stop. Feet up. Ah, just past Bulls Point Lighthouse. I think we're basically going out onto there, and then that is the knee. That's the end, the, uh, the turning point in every way. Head south from there, down flat beaches and whatnot, I imagine. Quite a bit of up and down still on these, this here headland, but I don't mind. So people sitting it out halfway up, don't say blooming, up and doing the same. And about 20 steps, and then I have a stand and a wheeze. <coughs> Trying to do it when people aren't looking, you know, a certain hiker cred to maintain. Now, you worry, food situation. I, I bought a load of emergency rations with me on this trip, packed some stuff, just dry things, chocolate, nuts, that sort of thing, flat pack, dried, high energy density. Um, there was two bars of chocolate and two packets of nuts in there, uh, and that's about 3,000 calories. I thought that'd be all right. That'll last me a day without shops and things, but I've eaten most of it now, so <laughs> I've got half a bag of nuts left. I need to restock and my pouch on the top of the rucksack there. That let me, uh, yeah, I need to find a village shop and buy a load more fig rolls or nuts or something, just to keep me going. I don't know how many calories I'm burning up on this trip. Certainly more than the uh, 2,000 calories a day that the average adult male uses just being alive. Probably nearer 3,000. Still, I had a huge English fried breakfast with like sausage and, and I, had the, I had the toast and marmalade and sugar in my tea as well. So, you know, I thought I'd stock up. And, a, and an orange juice as well. That's great. Need more orange juice. How long does scurvy take to set in? Asking for a friend. Yeah. So we've got about a mile up to the end of there, and then something similar on the other side on the way back out, and then down to Woolacombe, which is uh, somewhere I'd never heard of before. Only about three or four miles in total. I think I'll be there for about two this afternoon. Hopefully there are some of their shops are open. Hopefully they have a shop. Um, yeah. And then south down some sandy dune shoreline, which should be nice. Looking forward to getting around that headland and see it looking south, seeing what the rest of my week's going to look like. Yeah, we're on the knee at the moment. 
see Lundy in the distance there. Let me try the uh, not very good digital zoom on here. There we go, some sort of container ship passing in front of it. That's a little diving boat of some sort. Apparently there's a famous shipwreck down there or something. Yeah, I think we're probably going to be out of sight of Wales soon. My constant companion so far. Yeah, so, more later. Ah, so there we are, Mort Point. I don't know if you even going to hear this, it's a bit windy. Got a little microphone thing in my pocket. A bit of lunar landscape there. There we go, we are our last glimpse of Wales for the trip. And Lundy there, our new sea distant shore companion. Lots of dangerous rocks here, this is Mort Head. Auspicious name. Yeah, there's a boy marker out there, and uh, there you go, you can see that one there, the Devil's Knitting Needles there. And uh, I think that one's called Lady Misfortune's Grumpy Spaniel. Uh, I think that one there is just called LOL Shipwreck. So, all in all, a forbidding place. Anyway, look, to the south. That's me, that's where I'm going. I think, I don't know, I'm not sure where that very far one is. That might be next time, that might be like beyond Westward Ho. That might not be this week. So there's Woolacombe, somewhere in there, little houses up there, and beach, Woolacombe Beach. Uh, and there's another headland there, and then the other side of the other headland is Staunton Sands, and a very long beach, and then Westwood Ho, after a lot of inland chicanery as well. So, we're doing well. Ah, I can't remember what time it is, probably about one o'clock. Ah, I could do with a really big glass of fizzy drink with a lot of sugar in and some ice All right now. So we're going to... And press on before my nuts and water run out. Try and get to that beach place over there and hope they do ice cream. They probably do ice cream. Who wouldn't? Sadists, that's who. Well, seem to have stumbled into a postcard. Probably a 1930s railway poster or something. Don't know. Don't I find a beach cafe or shop though? That seems unremarkable. Look at all these people on the beach there. Wandering around like it's a summer holiday. This is, this is late September. Any hardened, rugged outdoors types like me should be out here. A lovely little seaside town there. Just not sure what they do for food and drink though. They must forage. I shall have to do the same. Also, I've lost the path as well. I think it's somewhere along here. I haven't seen an acorn in a while. I mean, I know it heads down, this, down that beach. I'm not going across the sand though, because that's going to be really slow going with my backpack and everything. Still, it's a lovely sight. Hello. So on the move again. Ah, Woolacombe is lovely. Wonderful golden sands, bright sunny sky, blue skies. I had an ice cream. It was clotted cream. It was very good. Ah, I found a shop, some supplies. Stuffed me little calorie pouch full of nuts and jelly babies and things again. So we're okay if I get caught in the wilds without a shop for a day. Replenished the water. Ah, had a lunch. Even had some Lucasade. I mean, if there's any point in my life that it was justified drinking Lucasade, now probably is it. I mean, yeah, this is a lovely place. But <clears throat> it's only about two in the afternoon. So um, I'm going to push on. The plan is to get to Croyd, which I've seen on the map has a campsite, is about as far away as I can get before sunset. It's all good. And I found the path again, or I did. I don't know, is that how I want it? Oh dear. Might have to check the map in a minute. Anyway, I don't want to be walking along the beach, sand and stuff. Far too hard going. Anyway, so, on to the uh, next objective. Check that out. <clears throat> so you got two blokes in parasailing gear, parachuting a massive fan propeller on their backs. And they've been up there for about two hours <laughs> since I came around the headland. You just point the thing out the wind and have the, the, the blades going at just the right speed and I think you can hang there indefinitely. They certainly have been. That's be quite impressive. It's amazing what they can do nowadays. <sighs> Not sure I'm up for a go at that myself just at the moment. 
Ah, oh, so we got, this is oh, something, Warren something, yeah, I don't know, <laughs> terrible guide. Uh, that's Woolacum there, um, I'm just wandering along, not, not on the beach, in the dunes above the beach. That's where the old path goes. It's a little bit sandy, but uh, not actually walking across a wet beach, which would really slow me down. Uh, and get my boots all salty and so on so yeah i want to try and avoid actually walking on beaches where possible this trip but walking near them and looking out at the golden sand the little, little people down there playing and swimming and stuff absolutely lovely so that over there's nap's head i'm gonna have to go around the end of there and back in again because croyd is on the other side as far as i can tell from the map croyd is something similar to woolacombe but just over the next ridge line instead uh, there is a campsite on the map there. I'm going to have to exercise enormous self-discipline and actually stop there when I get there. I think I can make it by sunset. I've got about four or five hours. So yeah, onwards. Much more yomping to do. I'm having an adventure still. <sighs> I mean, yeah, so preoccupied with um, with moorland and cliff tops. You sort of forget how hard going sandy dune country can be but uh, yeah that last mile was one I'm not forgetting hurry yeah, very picturesque of course but uh, oof, yeah trudge trudge it's basically dry sand sort of slippy slidey slight inclines here and there Glad I'm, my nightmare would be hitting that in the rain on a significant hill I think I probably just wouldn't even make it and there you are look at you sat there lazing in the sun no don't get up it's fine I'll talk to them. Yeah, so now I'm feeling good. I've got everything, all my stocks and stores and things replenished. Everything I need. I just need to keep plodding on time-wise out around that big long headland. Uh, and then down the other side, hopefully before sunset, which is in about four hours time. Uh, which I think I can do. Uh, the power senders are gone. God, I can see people moving around up there. A lot of hikers out and about today. I'd have thought, you know, Tuesday. Term time's over still. Perhaps, perhaps this is the best time to take your holiday. Nice late Indian summer sort of thing going on here. It's not too cold at all, but it's not boiling hot. And of course, yeah, no rabble and school children everywhere. They're all back at school, I think. It's lovely. It's the island of Lundy over there. I saw one of the boats that went out there in, in the harbour at Ilfracombe in the morning. And then I saw it actually going out there as I was zomping around the cliffs. I didn't know you could actually go out there. I thought it was a protected bird sanctuary or something, but who knows. They had to do day trips from Ilfracombe. They might get do day trips from somewhere around Barnstable Way as well, out there. Ah, oh, this is just really lovely. I probably have caught the sun a bit though. I don't know, we'll see, and we'll see, that could just be, my arms go red when I'm ex exerting myself as well, so it's hard to tell. <sighs> oh look, there's another one, let's back up. You see that? Yeah, there you have it, little speck. Just drifting around. Presumably he'll see a backpacker in distress at some point and then swoop for the kill. I have to keep my head down. Yeah. So I seem to be pulling about a day and a quarter's worth of hiking every day, which logically means that after five days I'll have gained a whole day on the trip. So I may, may be able to finish early. So the plan is camping tonight because, yeah, go on then, why not? But, <laughs> but I definitely want to be in a BnB and b tomorrow night because uh, that's when the, uh, the apocalyptic rain comes. Uh, starts at like midnight Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then continues pretty much all Thursday. And is, well, I'm going to have to trudge on in some of it, but if I can be <laughs> indoors in dry during as much of it as possible, that will be nice. Plus, you know, good night's sleep in a and b So if I get to Croyd today, that puts me ahead on Woolacombe, which is where I should have stopped this evening. Um... I might be able to push on through past Brompton, which would be the next stop. Logically, I'll end up overshooting that at lunchtime again, probably, if I keep my same pace. And from there, I think I might be able to get to Barnstable. 
I don't know, I can't remember which side of the river Barnstable is, but I cross at Barnstable. That way I don't have to, then I can stay, the Barnstable is a big town, sort of regional county town sort of the area sort of thing. And I'm bound to find a travel lodge or something there. It's not really a tourist location either, so that'll help. Find a hotel or something, spend the night. Then I got potentially another day and a bit. I don't know what happens after that, to be honest, but a lot of that's going to take place in a pissing rain if the Met Office weather... I have to get find somewhere get somewhere where there's some internet so I can get an updated projection because the weather on the Met Office's websites change as they get more and more precise data as it sort of gets closer to now. So it's always good to keep checking your weather. But, yeah. I mean, I'm just luxuriating in this deluge of vitamin D I'm getting at the moment and these friendly photons. Um, because in about... 24 to 48 hours time I'm gonna this is gonna be a distant memory I'm gonna be trudging along in an anorak and swearing a lot I imagine so the more distance I can get before that happens the better if I can get to Barnstable for Thursday Wednesday night Wednesday night Thursday morning B&B yeah and then we'll just wing it from there but I could be finished on Friday I don't know we'll see anyway what's love in this Takes me back childhood holidays. I mean, I had actual childhood holidays in Constantine Bay around Padstow Way, and I'll be hitting that in sort of week two or three. So you had to revisit those, literally speaking. But uh, this is a lot like it. It's, it's nice. I like it a lot. Ah, so we are on the end of Nap Head. Another promontory. Shining into the sun again. Uh, so you can just about see the tip of Worm's Head Wales there, bye bye. There's uh, Willerton, Willerton, yeah, something like that. There's a jogger standing on a wall. A lot of joggers out here. This must be their route for their couch to 5k type style thing. Seems a bit challenging if you ask me. I'll have to get back on that again when I get back. And there's a flagpole thing there on the end. But that's all more interesting. So that's Croyd just over the rise there my campsite for the night and then there's one more headland with a bit of up and down follow that round and then behind is Saunton Sand and that big gap there is the Tor and Torridge estuary and of course if there were a ferry or bridge running from one side of that to the other I would be able to shave about two days off this trip because I believe that is Westwood Ho cluster of white things in the distance there. Yeah, if I was having no luck focusing on any of that. Um, yeah, but I'm going to have to go inland to the left of the bend there and then down to Barnstable and all sorts of things. But just look how flat it all is down there. I think this is probably the last hill of any substance on my entire trip. And that's the first thing tomorrow morning, my customary early morning <laughs> cardiac explosion. But for now, uh, moves you on down the other side of this headland down to the campsite I've picked out there's about five campsites down there so I hopefully I'll be able to settle on one of them rather than just keep trying to walk into into the future into the night uh, I better unzoom there we go here you are lazing around again I came up with a revolutionary plan to attach a 15 kilogram lifts worth of helium balloons to it on the way along but uh, I don't know that's going to be a bit problematic. Probably some sort of helium ballast tank, though. Might not be a bad idea. Could take some of the edge off it a bit. Anti-gravity of a sort. Don't know. I'll give it wings and then just run forwards very quickly. No? Okay. I'll carry on thinking about it. Here we are. I think the real problem I'm having with this whole walking too far each day thing is that this is absolutely the best time of day for hiking I'm finding. I'm loving it. This sort of four o'clock in the afternoon down to sunset. And the sun's low, the light's a lovely sort of golden colour on the grass. There's a warm wind coming in off the sea constantly, which, well, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's cool wind, really. And it's, that's just what I need. It's just what I want for my uh, perspirations and whatnot. I just want to lose my hat. So uh, I just love walking at this time of day. Maybe I should just stay in bed much longer and uh, I don't know. Anyway, I'm quite liking overachieving 
<laughs> you know, even if the uh, the guide itinerary that I picked out is basically designed so that you've got lots of time to go and look at things along the way, which I've done pretty much none of. That's why I've got so much time on my hands, that's why I get bored, that's why I carry on walking. So, uh, mind you, the guide, the Southwest Coast Path website guide thing, has a little section for each day with longer option, and it suggests when, where to carry on to if you want to much, go much further each day, and I seem to be hitting those pretty regularly, so that's something. But I wonder if I'm missing any intricate tea rooms on the way. I really am here for the walking, though. That's the thing. It's the, the physicality of it all. The, you know, this is... I, I grew up on all sorts of books about... Well, Lord of the Rings, obviously. But, you know, books about the quest and the arduous trek, the great long journey. You know, and our heroes and our protagonists carry the magical MacGuffin from the land of safe and happy to the, the perilous place to do the thing. And it's that journey, that travelogue of it all that... Just sort of really captures my imagination. Now here I'm doing something well. I say similar, that imagine the world will not care or notice if I do this or don't, but it's nice to have a really, really long physical challenge to, to tackle and to, and to find myself being able to do it as well. I, yeah, it's great. Anyway, waxing philosophical again, so there's a, there's, there's a picture of Lundy. I'm going to be quiet. Ah, good news everyone, I stopped walking, I actually set up in a campsite. Not ninja camping, paid for this one. It's huge, the Rura Bay caravan site, holiday resort, whatever. Spent half an hour stumbling past the exterior perimeter of it, not realising it was all one thing. Uh, £15 a night, they're a little bit pricey. It's a nice field though. <sighs> and they got some sort of club stroke bar stroke thing over there, which I'm going to go and investigate in a minute. So I need to drink. But also, I need to watch the sunset at Croyd Bay, which is in about an hour and a half. So I might see if I can find a quick meal and then get out to the beach. Just uh, leave the backpack behind. There we go. There it is. Another night in the TARDIS. You wouldn't believe it. It's a lot smaller inside than outside. But, uh, let me put my put my foot in shot for scale. There we go. Yeah, it is actually that small. It's not actually big enough for me to lay on my back with my feet pointing upwards. <laughs> they hit the top at the foot end. Yes, yeah, so I shall. Uh, oops, I forgot to open the vent thing. It's a good design, but I just think I've underspecced. I mean, for a one-man lightweight tent, that does the job, but. I am not that man. <laughs> I am a man and a half by their compa by their measurements. So I'm wondering for the next week when I go off and do that distant, distant uh, coast over there, whether I ought to be thinking about uh, buying a two-man ultralight tent and thinking sod the extra kilogrammage. I'll have toughened up and beefed up a bit more by then, I'm sure. Ah, so there we go. That's basically the end of day. What Tuesday is it? Lost track, I really have. Day four, probably. You should have seen me at Willacombe, seen me instead at Croyd, about six miles south. So, it's been a good day. Been glorious sunshine, great scenery. The hills haven't been too back breaking. I think we're pretty much, I mean, that over there is probably the last hill I'm going to be facing this week. The rest of it's all low lying estuary country. So, I don't know what happened with the. Uh, blistery left foot. I think, um, well, either I've developed previously untapped and unrealised Wolverine-like regeneration powers, or the endorphins have been hitting so hard and so often that <laughs> no signals from my body are going to get through the haze of howling. But either way, I'm all right, and I see no real problem carrying on for more days. Easier days. <coughs> Probably longer days, though. Yes, I think the, uh, the guide puts the mileage up a bit to counter the, uh, the flatness of the terrain. Now, tomorrow afternoon it's going to start raining in earnest, so I expect to try and find, I'm going to have to try and really push and try and get not to Braunton, but to, work, to Barnstable, try and find a B&B. &B. Which is ironic really, because they're going to leave Barnstable for Westwood Ho again, and then have to come back to Barnstable for the train home. So anyway, maybe there's a left luggage locker at the station, I could just chuck everything in, do the last, do the last bit with just my clothes. I don't know. <laughs> No problems for tomorrow and beyond. We're going to see some stupid rain, I think. I need to find some internet and check that's still going to be the case. 
But uh, no, I'm really, I, I think I've done about 45 miles. Got to be pushing for 50 by now, should be. Which is hard to believe. Anyway, I'm going to go and check out the uh, potential of that bar over there. See you later, probably tomorrow.